did Jonah and Aaron have an evil spirit? I want you to consider this. Both Jonah and Aaron both were prophets. That was what their calling was. They were made to prophesy. But yet both of them had challenges. They both had moments of combat with God. I want to tell you this, that both, Mo both Moses and Aaron's situation revealed a lot that the prophetic could be on you and evil spirits could be in you. It revealed that sin, which First John 3 says, whoever sins is of the devil, it could be in you and the prophetic could be on you. So, in the life of Aaron, you recognize that there is a mystery revealed. That Aaron had evil spirits. He was a prophet according to his purpose. But he didn't purpose it in his heart to be prophetic. He, he purposed in his heart to sin. Just think about that. Your purpose that God gives you is pure, is beautiful, is spotless. But what you purpose in your heart is different from your purpose. God can make a woman to be a wife. But if she purposes in her heart to argue, if she purposes in her heart to be lazy, the purpose is to be a wife. But it's different what she's purposing in her heart. If God makes somebody to be a janitor, their calling is to be a janitor, but what they're purposing in their heart may be to be a hockey player. The purpose that God makes a person is powerful, is pure, it's peaceful. But what they do with that is de determined by what they purpose in their heart. This is so deep. And I, I want you to really think about this. Aaron was made a prophet. But he didn't purpose in his heart to be prophetic. When Moses is fasting, seeking God 40 days, no bread, no water. In, in the supernatural, Aaron is in the natural. He's in the congregation of carnality. There's no difference in him than the people that's in the congregation sinning, blaspheming, walking in abominable life styles. So Aaron has an evil spirit. An evil spirit means that I am usurping an ability to go against what the Father desires from me. Whether it be words, whether it be ways, whether it be thoughts. Our evil spirit teaches you to consider things that will destroy the momentum you're building to be humble. The momentum that you're building to be meek. Evil spirits, they introduce you to other options rather than peacefulness, rather than power, rather than purity. They introduce you into other things. How do you, you know if you have an evil spirit? 
when an evil spirit is inside of you, you will know it by the thoughts that control you in the presence of righteousness. So Aaron is in the presence of righteousness through Moses. But Moses is frustrated by Aaron because Aaron has an evil spirit. Jonah has such an evil spirit that he fights with God. He gets swallowed by a well. He gets thrown off a board, which is a frightening situation. They throw him off board. He gets ate by a, lion, a, 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 a big fish, and he's inside the big fish three days, three nights. He comes out. He, he goes to Nineveh. The power of God falls. They get free. And he's angry that Nineveh has escaped the judgment because he has an evil spirit. He's mad that they got blessed. He's mad that they refuse to be God's enemy. Are you listening to me? Jonah got upset that they no longer were disobedient. Jonah has an evil spirit. Saints, even in the word, it says that when Jesus picked the disciples, was not one a devil, was not one with the devil. So saints, look at this here, your purpose is not always what you purpose in your heart. Your purpose is what God purposed in his heart for you. But what are you purposing in your heart? The Bible said when Jesus said, eat of my flesh, drink of my blood, many disciples no longer followed him. Okay, so their purpose was to be a disciple. But they did not purpose in their heart disciples. God's purpose is not what's being fulfilled. What you purpose in your heart is what's being fulfilled. So if God purpose for you to make it to heaven, if you purpose in your heart to make it into hell, guess where you're going to be? A hundred, two hundred. You're going to be in the lake of fire, the bottomless pits. You're going to be there because it's not about God's purpose in, 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 in the format of what's manifesting. What's manifesting is what you purpose in your heart. It is God's purpose. For Lucifer to be guardian cherub, anointed cherub, but Lucifer purposed in Lucifer's heart to be the enemy of God. What's manifesting in heaven is not the purpose of God. What's manifesting in heaven is the purpose of one's heart. This is what goes on in the earth realm too. That's why a lot of times people say, you know, um, how could God let this happen? Not looking at what did you purpose in your heart? What did you purpose in your heart that had a part to play in what took place? So when Peter cuts off the man's ear, is this the purpose of God? No. But he's right next to God. God is standing right next to Peter 
and Peter cuts off the man's ear, and God picks back on the man's ear. God's purpose is not for the man to lose an ear or an ear drum, but the man loses an ear. So how does Peter, who has been called to the purpose of God, is doing something that God didn't purpose? Because Peter, what are you purposing in your heart? Just remember what I'm saying. Just re remember what I'm saying. Your purpose can be absolutely different to what you're purposing in your heart. And what God purposes for you may very well not happen for you because it actually didn't happen for a lot of people that you knew before you. Most of everybody on earth have mothers and fathers according to who birthed them who didn't fulfill the purpose of God. And even when you come into the purpose of God, there is a demon that is after replaying the same purpose of heart that they had that made them not make it to the fulfillment of the purpose of God. So you got to look at seasons when you start purposing in your heart. And those purposes that you have in your heart are exactly the very things that evil spirits desire you to purpose so that God's purpose will be ignored and Satan's purpose will be explored. God's purpose will be ignored. Satan's purpose will be explored. Did, did Aaron have an evil spirit? Aaron had an evil spirit. That's why when Miriam is talking to Aaron, Aaron doesn't rebuke her because Aaron has an evil spirit like Miriam. This is why Jonah is being thrown out into the water after they cast lots because Jonah has an evil spirit. Do you know the power of casting lots? Back in the old time day, even in the New Testament, the book of Acts, they did this to get the replacement for Judas, which was Matthias, I believe. When they cast lots, it was for them to inquire of the Lord to show them exactly what was wrong, what was right in the situation. So they would cast lots because they were asking God, reveal to us what's up. Reveal to us what's up. Don't let us assume. Don't let us guess. Don't let us get destroyed because someone else has sinned. Show us what's going on. Don't let us pick the wrong person. So they cast lots when Judas was exiled. He was dead. In the book of Acts, they cast lots. And when they cast lots, it was to show them what was the heart of God in the matter. What was God's purpose? And when God places you in your purpose for your life, just remember, God is not controlling what you purpose in your heart. That's all you, boo-boo. That's all you. It's not God. That's you. And he will never remove that authority. You will always be the one controlling what you purpose in your heart. So if you purpose in your heart to destroy, you will destroy, even though God's purpose was not for you to be a destroyer. If you purpose in your heart to smoke and God doesn't want you to smoke, you're going to smoke because that's what you purposed in your heart. If God did not purpose in your heart for you to be poor and you are not purposing in your heart to be wise, you're going to be poor because without wisdom, you can't break the poverty. Do you 
know how much crackheads God doesn't purpose in his heart for them to be crackheads, but they purpose in their heart to do crack. This is why so many people go crazy because nobody is really facing the truth that when you follow Jesus, it doesn't take away your will to become his enemy. Because you're faithful to God today, it doesn't take away the fact that you could choose unfaithfulness tomorrow. Just because you bless God today don't mean that you're not going to curse God tomorrow. And it's not up to God and it's not up to Satan. It's up to what you purpose in your heart. What are you purposing in your heart? What are you purposing in your heart? It's all you. It's not Satan. It's not God. They both are watching what you purpose in your heart. Whether you have joy or peace, it's not up to God. That's why the Lord say, let peace of God rule in your hearts and minds. Because it's not up to God. It's up to what you purpose in your heart. Do you purpose in your heart to have peace? Do you purpose in your heart to have honor? Do you purpose in your heart to obey? Do you have purpose in your heart to resist the devil? If you don't purpose in your heart to resist the devil, you know what? Everything that pleases your flesh, you will agree to it and you will not pit up any fight or opposition to stay in light. You will accept darkness, you will receive carnality, and you will accept corruption. So I'll leave you with this. Jonah and Aaron had evil spirits. Look at the behavior that happens when you have an evil spirit in you. God gives you a purpose, but you purpose in your heart to do something else. My, my God. How do you know that you have an evil spirit inside of you? Because what you start purposing in your heart to do is against the purpose of what God has purposed for you to do. That's how you know. That's how you know. The day that you eat of this tree, you shall surely die. What, what, wait, what, what does that mean? What does that really mean? The day that you eat of this, you shall surely die. What does it mean that shall surely die? Because Adam lived 900 years. So God wasn't talking about body. God was talk talking about heart, mind, soul. God was talking about the inner man. The in inner man called Adam died. So the purposes in his heart was no longer good, it was evil. My goodness. So, so look, Adam has a son called Cain and Abel. God is telling Cain the same thing he's telling his dad. What's telling his dad? The purpose. And even though God is telling Cain the purpose, what does Cain do? He starts to purpose in his heart. Cain purposes in his heart, and that's what becomes Cain's purpose, what he purposed in his heart. Not what God purposed. God made him a tiller of the ground. God gave him a strong soul and anointing. God gave him the ability to create and honor and obey and move in doing great exploits in his assignment. But you know what he purposed in his heart was to be jealous. He purposed in his heart to hate his brother. He purposed in his heart to defy God's instruction to give the offering that he wanted. He purposed in his heart something different. All, all throughout the word of God, you see that God gives people purposes and they purpose in their heart to do something else.
So Mary Magdalene, when she receives the purpose from Jesus, she purposes in her heart in alignment with the same purpose of Jesus. That's what made her powerful. Because it wasn't just this is what she was called to do. That wasn't her testimony. What she was called to do, she fulfilled the calling because she herself purposed in her heart in alignment with the purpose that she was given. The reason why Michael is so powerful today, because he purposed in his heart not to follow Lucifer. He purposed in his heart not to defy God. And Michael has a soul. Michael has a soul just like Lucifer had a soul. Just like the one third of the angels had souls. And Michael, though time and space go by and by, Michael does not use his soul to purpose in his heart evil. That's why the angels of God, the angels, see, you often think about the angels that was demoted, but Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, they all, all Nathaniel, they all was given higher levels of promotion because they purposed in their heart to stick with the purpose that God gave them. What's going to be the end of your story in life? Oh, this was their purpose. Yeah, but you didn't fulfill it. Because you never purposed in your heart the purpose. Look what Apostle Paul started teaching the church. He says, if you purpose in your heart to give, let a man purpose in his heart to sow seed. Why is Apostle Paul teaching on this? Because God is... Apostle Paul is saying, God wants people to sow. That's God's purpose. But the only people that's going to sow is the people that have purpose in their heart, God's purpose. Yeah. 